All right, One Wing Gamer here, and today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to show you how to use a PSP emulator. And the particular one I use is PPSSPP. So what you want to do is head on to www.ppsspp.org and you should get this little site right here. And if it doesn't look like this, and this doesn't look exactly like this almost, or if, it, I mean, it might have the, the HTT, yeah, there's, you know, I don't want to go to PayPal, you guys don't need to see that. But yeah, if it doesn't have all that stuff on there, make sure, make sure it's this website right here. Okay, and uh, you'll want to go to this blue download link right here. And uh, you can get it for your Android, although I've never tried it, so, um because I don't have an Android phone, I have a Windows phone, sadly. So we're going to download it for Windows. Download the zip file for the latest version. And I already have it downloaded, so I'm going to download that. And also, you will need... whoops. <laughs> you will need this right here. And that's your Microsoft Runtime Environment for 2013. Make sure it's 2013 or else it's not going to work. At least for right now, it won't. It's 2014, people. 2014. 2013. You're going to need the 2013 runtime environment for this to work. And I will post all of your links and stuff in the description so you know what you're getting. Alright, and then you're going to want to head on over to www.emuparadise.eme. Right there. Make sure that's right. Make sure your website looks just like this right here. And you're going to want to scroll on down to PSP ISOs. Alright. And on another note, be sure that um, if you don't want to get in any kind of legal trouble that you have a, you own a PSP working or not. And uh, you, have, you own a copy of whichever game you wish to download. Now I do, but uh, my PSP is broken right at the moment, sadly. I'm really sad about that. It broke on vacation. But anyway, um, so you just want to go pick a game. Let's, let's say I want to download Crisis Core, Final Fantasy VII. You want to scroll on down to here, where you see direct download links. And you'll see a file size right here. Download Crisis Core. And it'll ask you to enter a CAPTCHA, blah, blah, blah. Put in the CAPTCHA, verify and download. And yeah, mine's wrong, of course. So it, after you do that, um, it'll ask you, it'll show you the download link again, and you just hit download, and it'll download it for you. Okay. And uh, let's see. All right. So after you do that, wherever you saved your uh, PSP zip file to, you want to grab that and extract here. Open it on up, and it should look exactly like this. Okay, and right here you'll see two different versions. You'll see PPSSPP Windows and Windows 64. Now, if you're running a 64-bit computer, you'll want to run this one. If you're running a 32-bit, you'll want to run that one. Okay, and if you're not sure, what you can do is go to Computer, hit Properties, and right there, System Type, 64-bit Operating System. It's that easy. All right. So what we're going to do is open up the 64-bit, because that's the one I have for my computer. I'm running a 64-bit, obviously. And you'll get this screen right here. Now, for some of you that don't know computers very well, this may be a little intimidating. But don't worry, it's not bad at all. All I have to do is hit this Browse button right here. And uh, you remember that game we downloaded, or I told you how to download a minute ago? Well, you're going to go find it. So... What I suggest to you is you download it to your documents or somewhere else that you can find it very easily. And what I did was I downloaded it to a folder called PSP, which my emulator is in. And I went ahead and put a games folder in my PSP emulator folder. And you see right here, it doesn't come with one. So all I have to do is hit new folder, games, and just make sure you download all your games into here. Simple as that. So, all right. What you're gonna do is you're gonna click on your games folder that holds your games. Don't click on the individual games themselves, but just the folder right above that. You're going to hit OK. And as you see here, it's going to pop up all of these games that I have. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to click on it. Oh, wait. 
Nope. Error loading file. Okay, so if you get this message right here, all you want to do, or all you have to do, is go back to your PSP folder, go to your games, and as you see here, what you'll have after you download your game will look like this. And here's Cross's Core. So what you're going to do, extract here. And I already extracted part of it. So uh, I'm going to overwrite that real fast. And whenever this gets done, you'll have a folder. See, here it is already. And uh, you want to make sure this is 100% done before you do anything. See, it's adding more files. And if you haven't noticed, all these files are the same name. And I'll show you why here in just a second. Any second now. So yeah, this might take a little while, depending on how big the file of a game save you have. Oh wait, it's done. Okay, there you go. So now what you're going to do is you're going to right click on any of these RAR files, or zip files. I recommend using WinRAR to do all this. It's a lot easier and it's free. So what you're going to do is extract it here. And this is going to take another little bit of time, but as you see, now we have a little magic eye, so file right here. And that's that's the part you need. So just make sure you do this or else you're not going to be able to play. And what this does is you see all these files, are they're all segmented. It's different files with the same name, so they go in the same cluster. So what it does is it extracts every single one of these folders here into this one ISO file. Which is why these are 19 megabytes a piece, and this one's 1.5 gigs. It's just a better way to compress your files. It makes the full file size a lot smaller before you um, extract it. it. Makes it a lot easier to download stuff. Okay, so now that that's done, you open up your PSP emulator, and uh, you'll look for your game. That's really upsetting. I don't know which one is the right one. Well, so you might want to rename your stuff a little bit. See, so you don't want to click on this down here. You want to click on whichever one of these is the right one. Oh, well, I guessed right. All right, awesome. So when you open up your correct game folder, you'll see this little icon picture right here, if you did it right. If you did it wrong, it won't pop up, so you might want to go back and try again. So click on that, and voila, there you go. It's running. Final Fantasy 7, yeah. And, I don't have it with me right this second, but if you didn't know, you can use a uh, external controller with this. All you have to do is plug it up into your USB port and uh, you're off to go. It's already pre preset for you and everything. You can go ahead and go to control mapping. As you see, it's already set up. Everything's already set up. I haven't even plugged in the controller yet. Oh, it's really convenient. And it functions just like a regular PSP according to the controller you're using. Although, let's say, for example, you're using a uh, Xbox controller. You know, your, uh, your cross button on the PlayStation will be A, and circle will be B, and triangle will be Y, etc., etc. But then you'll have left trigger and right trigger, which are not on a PSP, obviously. So I'll show you what those do. And uh hold on one second. Hold on a second. I can't really show you without plugging it in myself. I mean I know I know I can show you, I just don't know what the button is. So for the sake of time, I'm just gonna plug in a controller real fast. Alright. Pressing left trigger on the controller will activate this cool menu right here. It's really nifty. And what you can do is you can do save states. And if you don't know what save states are, it's like instantly saving your game whenever you want. Without having to have a save point. And yeah, it's kind of cheating if you think about it, but huh, who cares, you know? It's pretty cool. You know, what if what if you need to go eat or something? Or you're in the middle of a thunderstorm and you don't have a save point. Especially on Final Fantasy games. I mean, come on now. Alright, and uh, something else right here, you have game settings, but uh, I'm going to go back to this and I'll show you that here in a minute. Look at that, it's so beautiful. Okay, 
That was left trigger, so let's show you what right, right trigger does. Now, if you didn't notice, it sped up the game a little bit. And it's a little glitchy, but if you set it up right, it won't be so bad. And it restarted the whole game. So I'm going to hold down right trigger and I'll show you how fast it goes compared to uh, the other bit. And you, you can hear, it, like, just how bad it sounds. But you can just skip through all kinds of stuff. Now, I'm going to go back to the game settings. And, uh, every game is going to be different. I mean, there's no, there's no changing that. So, depending on how well your computer runs a game, you might want to change some of these settings. You see you have buffer render C speed hack. Some of these settings you can change, make them a little bit run faster. Auto frames, yeah. Stuff, you know, you can change. What I would do is I would Google the game and look up for the best settings. Now, I don't particularly know the best settings for this game, because this is the first time you're running it on this emulator. But uh, these little speed up things are usually a um, good idea. Um, anything with high, you want to set it to low, usually. Just common sense stuff. Uh, and you don't want any of this stuff right here. Speed to the speed hubs. Um, anything that you can try. I mean, you could play around with it yourself, figure it out. Um, system. Uh, you want less lag. I'm not sure what's slower or less. Slower or less? I don't know. See, and then you can change all kinds of stuff. You change your CPU clock rate. I mean, I don't. I honestly don't know what this stuff does particularly, but you, when you look it up, other people have messed with it, and you can tell like how much better their settings are. So now I've messed with the settings a little bit. Look how terrible that is. But when I hold down right trigger, look how fast that's going. And it fixes itself, it's not so choppy. Isn't that cool, guys? Look at that. And I hold down right trigger, like, speed up. Ah, uh, this is why I love emulators. You can just skip through everything. Yeah, let's just just fly through the intro. Let's see how fast we can go. Oh yeah, I mean it's that simple. It's not really complicated to set up a game, you know, unless you just have a really bad computer. Then I wouldn't suggest trying to run anything. Wow, that train's going really fast. Listen to them talk. They're talking really fast. <laughs> oh yeah! Look at that. And then all you do is just, as soon as you let go of the right trigger, it fixes itself. Well, it's a little messed up. If it messes up like that, you just tap right trigger again, and it fixes it usually. Understood. Yeah, super speed. <laughs> But yeah. Alright. So I think that's about it, guys. Just, that's how you just download game, play your games. And, you know, Google any other settings that you want. But, uh, but yeah. Any of the games you add will, uh, appear right here. So let's add a couple more, just for example, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, yep, I don't want to play it right now. See, it keeps adding the games right here, and you can just click on your games that you want. And I think that's about it. So if you guys have any questions, I will try to answer them in the comments. And uh, if you'd like for me to do any more tutorials on stuff that I may or may not know, I can try to do a tutorial on something I don't know. Uh, I can learn pretty fast, I guess. So, uh, yeah. Until next time, One Winged Out.